I relish the thought of your envious face catching a glimpse, but I'm not one to revel in cruelty, so I'll let it slide. It might be rather awkward for you to witness me, so why not take shelter in the bathroom or some other secluded corner? She let out a raucous laugh through the phone, taunting him mercilessly. I hold nothing but contempt for this woman, more than anyone else in the world. No, in the entire universe. Thirteen years ago, she stole my husband from me. Cutting ties would be a relief, but alas, fate has tied us together as biological sisters. After she abruptly ended the call, I held the phone to my ear for a moment, suppressing a small chuckle. My name is Ruth, a 37-year-old divorcee. My marriage crumbled within a mere six months, all thanks to the scheming actions of my own sister. I have an identical twin named Rachel. Our resemblance is uncanny, often leading even our closest friends to mistake us for one another. However, despite our similar appearances, our personalities couldn't be more different. I tend to be reserved, while Rachel is assertive and bold. I excelled in academics, while Rachel thrived in sports. Rachel has a habit of speaking her mind without filter, often criticizing even my choice of attire with remarks like, How could you wear something so unstylish? People will think I lack style too because we're twins. That would be dreadful. Our tumultuous relationship isn't confined to our home. Rachel has a knack for stirring up trouble wherever she goes. During our school days, I frequently found myself harassed by girls from other schools because of her antics. Hey, stop hitting on my boyfriend, she would shout, even when I had no idea who these girls were. Not again, Rachel, I would sigh in exasperation. Rachel's penchant for snatching away anyone she fancied, regardless of their relationship status, only added fuel to the fire. While I blame the men too, Rachel's actions are particularly egregious. What's worse, she often loses interest in these conquests as quickly as she ensnares them, sometimes ending relationships in as little as a week. Rachel, you need to cease this foolishness. Have you ever considered the feelings of these other girls? And what about me? I'm suffering too. I once pleaded with her. Her response was dismissive, claiming that the jealousy of unattractive women was terrifying. As if her interference in my romantic life wasn't enough. She even had the audacity to belittle my boyfriend John. This man John is the same despicable ex-husband who callously discarded me 13 years ago. We became close while attending the same tutoring center, his quiet demeanor providing me solace in turbulent times. After graduating from the same university, we decided to tie the knot. Little did I know, just six months into our marriage, John would present me with divorce papers, uttering the words, Please divorce me. I reached my breaking point, and I'm sure you know precisely why. Seated next to him was my sister, Rachel, her face smug with satisfaction. Taken aback, I stammered, Huh. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? I don't remember. Before I could finish, John slammed his fist on the desk, his voice booming, Really? How dare you? You've been cheating on me. Can you still deny it after seeing this? He thrust several pictures onto the desk capturing a man and a woman entering a hotel together. To my shock, the images portrayed my sister, Rachel, entering a hotel with a man I didn't recognize. I couldn't comprehend what my ex-husband was accusing me of. No, no, this is Rachel. It's not me, I exclaimed. Rachel burst into tears, confessing. I can't keep lying to you, John. John's expression softened as he turned to Rachel, thanking her for her honesty. I was left bewildered, unsure of what was happening. Then, John directed his accusatory gaze back to me, launching into a fabricated tale that bordered on the absurd. According to him, I had been cheating on him, disguising myself as Rachel to deceive him. He had fully bought into this ludicrous narrative spun by my own sister. Furious, I responded to my ex-husband, Are you serious, John? You've been with me for years, and you believe my sister, whom you've known for only a few months? Are you in your right mind? Are you an idiot? My calm retort seemed to infuriate him further, leaving him only capable of glaring at me in response. To my astonishment, Rachel had the audacity to flirt with John. Though you share the same face, your personalities couldn't be more different, she remarked, shamelessly attempting to charm him. You're not charming at all. Rachel always listens to my grievances with a smile. She's so patient. I couldn't wrap my head around what I was hearing. Rachel's tears seemed so artificial, and behind them, I could sense her smug satisfaction. 
Rachel had always been a master at playing men, ever since our school days, but her targets had shifted with her career. Now she sought men of status and wealth. John, my ex-husband, who worked for a prominent corporation and hailed from a well-off family, fit her criteria perfectly. It dawned on me that she must have set her sights on him from the moment I introduced them at our wedding. My ex-husband had been completely taken in by my sister's deception. I never imagined that the man I had been with for so long could be so easily fooled. In that moment, any lingering feelings I had for him faded rapidly. You two are despicable. Do as you please, but never show your faces in front of me again. I declared, my voice trembling with suppressed emotion. Despite the tears threatening to spill, I managed to hold them back. Without hesitation, I filled out the divorce papers and tossed them at the two of them. I knew my sister's cunning too well. She and John probably hadn't consummated their relationship yet. Pursuing compensation from them would be a daunting task, but if it meant ridding myself of their presence, I didn't care about the money anymore. Upon returning to my parents' house, their fury at my sister's actions led them to disown her. When questioned about her reaction, she brushed it off, saying, Oh, really? I don't care. But if you're having money trouble, they'll come begging to me. Okay, bye then, trivializing even her own parents' feelings. A friend later informed me that my ex-husband and my sister had tied the knot just three months later. I was left stunned, unable to even shed a tear. For thirteen years since then, I had not laid eyes on my sister and her husband. Then, out of the blue, I received a call from an unknown number on my cell phone. A hello, Ruth, the voice on the other end greeted me, instantly recognizable. I couldn't fathom how she had the audacity to address me as Rachel. I don't know how you have the nerve to call me Rachel, I spat out, incredulous. Rachel chuckled in response, her tone lacking any semblance of remorse. Are you still holding a grudge? You're always so gloomy, Ruth. But anyway, I have a favor to ask. She continued, her words dripping with nonchalance. I'm pregnant. Oh, and a father is John, whom you love so dearly. Ha <laughs> ha. So I thought you could be the one to break the news to our parents about their first grandchild, since they won't listen to me. Her brazenness left me speechless. What reason do you have to be so cheerful when you've been disowned? I retorted, my frustration simmering beneath the surface but Rachel simply laughed it off, as if my words were inconsequential. How many years has it been? Thirteen years, I believe. You're probably still living alone in our parents' house, nursing your grudges, she taunted. Well, I'll be the one to give them a grandchild instead of you. Rachel had always possessed a knack for getting under people's skin. I'd love to witness your envy, but I'll spare you the sight. It would be too pitiful, she added, her laughter echoing through the phone. It'll be awkward if you see me, so why don't you hide in the bathroom or something? With that, she abruptly ended the call, leaving me to stew in silence. I held the phone to my ear for a moment longer, chuckling at the absurdity of it all. When the weekend arrived, I was lounging the backyard when my phone rang again. Glancing at the screen, I saw that it was from a blocked number, undoubtedly my sister's doing. Annoyed, I answered the call, snapping, Hey, unblock me already. Rachel's voice came through the line, unrepentant. What's wrong with blocking someone you don't want to hear from? That's what call blocking is for, she retorted casually. Oh, but maybe you don't understand because you're stupid. I couldn't help but laugh sarcastically at her arrogance. Suddenly, I heard a crash on the other end of the line, indicating her irritation. I've come all this way. Why is nobody home? I told you I'd come today, didn't I? Huh? You were serious. I initially thought you were joking. I responded calmly to my younger sister's enraged and slightly shaky voice. It was apparent she was standing in front of our old house, the one none of us resided in anymore. Concerned about the potential disturbance she was causing, I swiftly provided her with my current address and hung up the phone. After about an hour, the doorbell chimed and there stood Rachel and John, her sullen expression matching his. Without preamble, Rachel launched into her tirade. You've got some nerve. And what is this place? Why on earth would someone like you be living in such a nice apartment? Her eyes blazed with anger. Unfazed by her outburst, I calmly informed them that the neighbors wouldn't appreciate the commotion. Inviting them inside, I led Rachel to the room where she seemed taken aback by its size. Suppressing a smirk, I gestured towards our mother, quietly observing from the couch. Well, you said you had something to discuss. I don't mind at all but if I'm in the way, should I hide in the bathroom or something? 
I quipped sarcastically, eliciting a sharp retort from Rachel. Moving closer to our mother, Rachel nervously greeted her. Hi, Mom. Long time no see. I'm pregnant, which is why we wanted to discuss if it's possible for John and me to stay here for a while. Suppressing a burst of laughter at her audacious request, I exclaimed, Wait, you want me to live with you guys? No way. Have you forgotten what you did to me in the past? Absolutely not. But Rachel cut me off sharply, snapping, Ruth, just shut up. This house is still under Dad's name, right? You can't even get remarried, and you're still leeching off our parents. How pathetic for a single woman like you. With a smug grin, Rachel declared, Great job taking care of our folks. From now on, John and I will live here and take care of them. So can you leave? Oh, and where's Dad? Is he at work? I had reached my limit, but it was our mother who spoke up first. With quiet solemnity, she informed us, Dad's gone. He passed away. Those few words hung heavily in the air. My parents were always serious people, and despite my divorce 13 years ago, they had always apologized to me, even though it was Rachel's fault. My father, in particular, used to express regret, saying, maybe it was my fault for not raising her better. I'm sorry, Ruth. I'm really sorry. His depression deepened to the point where he found it difficult to continue working. At the time, both of my parents were in their early 50s, and we were surviving on my income and mom's part-time job. A while later, my father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away 10 years ago. Just before he died, he made a request, don't tell Rachel anything. I don't think I'll make it to heaven if she comes to my funeral. True to his wishes, Mom and I didn't contact Rachel. We moved into our current house about five years ago. Mom had developed issues with her leg due to overworking, and we decided against renovating our old house, situated atop a hill, fearing it would be too much for her to manage. Since moving into this accessible home, Mom's leg had been feeling much better. Though I tried to maintain composure, thoughts of my late father threatened to overwhelm me. Tears welled in Mom's eyes, mirroring my own sorrow. Predictably, Rachel's response to her grief was callous. Too little, too late. Besides, it's not my fault Dad got sick. In fact, you're living in such a nice place now because of Dad's inheritance, right? That's not fair. What about my share? Didn't I have the right to inherit? She spat out, nonsensical accusations slipping effortlessly from her lips. Without hesitation, Mom retorted, her anger palpable. Inheritance? There's no such thing. You only came to us when you were in trouble, doing stupid things before your marriage. How many times do you think we paid alimony because you messed around with a married man? Live with you? Never. You must be joking. Don't be ridiculous. It was the first time both Rachel and I had witnessed Mom so enraged. Sensing the tension, Rachel fell silent. Then John, who had remained quiet like a puppet until now, interjected, Rachel, you've been deceiving me, haven't you? Ever since. I marry you, and my life's been a mess. You're a reckless spender, and you don't do any housework. My ex-husband's words nearly made me burst out laughing. He must be quite something to have put up with her for 13 years. Moreover, when he approached me, he said, Ruth, I've been regretting our divorce. Do you want to start over? Let's let bygones be bygones. When he tried to touch me softly, I felt a chill run down my spine. No way. Please, let bygones be bygones. Who does he think he is? Is he stupid? It's not his place to say that, I thought, just as I was about to dodge his touch. Suddenly, the door to the next room burst open. Could you not touch her with your dirty hands, please? A man exclaimed as he appeared, catching both of us off guard. Ignoring Rachel's murmurs of confusion, I explained, I told you to stay hidden because I didn't want to involve you. He responded, I couldn't stand it when he tried to touch you, Ruth. Besides, I think having a third party will help the discussion, don't you think? Exasperated, I introduced them. Okay, okay. This is my husband, Alex, and Tony, come here. This is our son, Tommy. He's eight years old. Tony, who had been peeping out from behind the door, glared at Rachel and her husband. Huh? You're remarried? Unbelievable. Why? Rachel was more surprised than anyone that I had a husband and a son. My ex-husband, John, was equally shocked, gaping like a fish out of water. What do you mean? Why? How many years do you think it's been? It's been 13 years. 13 years, and despite all that time passing, you guys haven't changed one bit.
though, I added somewhat sarcastically. Their faces turned bright red. I met my current husband, Alex, shortly after my father passed away. We were colleagues for a while, and one day he asked me out. When I rejected him, saying that I was a divorcee, he responded, Does being divorced mean you can't remarry? He asked me out once more, and we got married a year later. Our son, Tommy, was born the following year. Alex treats my mother very well, doesn't mind us all living together, and my in-laws, who already live with Alex's brother and his wife, have reassured me, saying, We're glad you're here for Alex. It was Alex who proposed moving to our current house, concerned about my mother's mobility. Facing the two shocked individuals, I firmly stated, My mother and I are living our lives here. Can you not disrupt? Turning my attention to Rachel, I continued, You said you were pregnant. How many months along are you? Their flustered responses to my question hinted that Rachel was likely lying about being pregnant. I had been married to John for only six months and I never got pregnant. That fact had been the reason my former mother-in-law used to make snide comments. If Rachel wasn't pregnant, it meant that was probably the case. Rachel seemed to get along with my bad-tempered former mother-in-law. Unable to endure the harsh glares from my family, the two hastily left our house. I mean, I had heard stories, but is she really your sister? She does look like you, but her character. Alex remarked, trailing off. Anyway, it's settled for now, he concluded with a smile, to which I responded with a bitter smile. Mm, really? Later that evening, the doorbell rang incessantly. Watching the monitor, I sighed. They came after all, I murmured to myself. Opening the door, I found Rachel and John standing there with pale faces. We need help. Can you lend us some money? They pleaded, kneeling down. My husband looked puzzled, but my mother and I felt differently. During the day, while waiting for a call from Rachel, my mom received a call from a certain individual, a friend of my deceased father, who currently rented our old home. His family was living there now. When I returned home, I found the flower buds in the garden ravaged and the windows cracked. The security footage clearly showed a man and a woman, with the woman infuriated, stomping on the flower buds and hurling stones at the windows. Of course, it was my enraged sister, Rachel. During a phone call with me, Mom had given Rachel's contact information to Dad's friend, and upon learning about Rachel's actions, he was furious. It seemed that in the damaged garden, there were rare flowers that were difficult to grow, and they asked for compensation. They seemed to be struggling financially to the point of having difficulty with housing, so I expected them to turn up again. But I never thought they'd show up that very day. I must admit, their audacity impressed me. I can give you some money, but there's one condition. I stated firmly as I watched them trudge home with slumped shoulders. Despite myself, I couldn't help but laugh inwardly and think serves you right. In their hands was a written pledge I had just made them sign. I had ensured they wrote in the pledge that they would never approach me again, in return for me taking responsibility for this incident. But Rachel is still my sister by blood. It's hard to completely cut ties with her. There may come a time when she'll use the power of the authorities to approach me. When that time comes, I'm prepared to fight using the audio recordings I secretly made 13 years ago. This time as evidence. Because you see, I have no intention of forgiving my sister and her husband any time soon. Later, a friend told me that my ex-husband had immediately resigned from the big corporation after our divorce and started working as a staff member in a fortune-telling establishment run by my former mother-in-law. Because they were family, he was paid a high salary, and he and my sister seemed to have been living a life of luxury. However, a few months ago, my former mother-in-law suddenly passed away from illness, and my ex-husband, who had no talent for fortune-telling, took over as her successor. But the establishment quickly closed down. In their desperation, the couple claimed, This is a bracelet that our late mother lovingly made, and targeted the people who had faith in my former mother-in-law. However, a whistleblower exposed their lies and the victims formed a group. The victims began flocking to the establishment every day, and my sister, who no longer had a place to live and work, came to ask for my help. I was so irritated by their audacity. However, seeing that the police have started moving, it's probably only a matter of time before the two of them are held accountable for their crimes. After that, we moved again. The reason was my husband Alex's job transfer. Can I really come along? Mom asked apologetically, to which Alex, my husband, responded with a chuckle. What are you talking about? 
You're an important part of our family, mother. Even if you resist, I'll carry you over my shoulder and take you along, okay? Upon hearing Alex's light-hearted joke, mom let up tears of gratitude. Grandma, you're crying again. Here, have a Kleenex. Tell me, serving his emotional grandmother, was concerned but still smiled. As I watched my family, I felt a wave of gratitude for the happiness I felt. 